Lynn Hilton, you founded BAST almost 12 years ago now. So what was the catalyst for creating it in the first place? When I was working at ACM, I got approached by some of the students there and they asked me if I could help them understand what it took to be a singing teacher and if I could put on a little workshop or course or something like for them because they realised that when they were finishing their course and graduated, that actually, you know, they weren't going to be getting lots of gigs just because they've got a degree and they probably would need to look at other ways of earning income. And some of them had obviously thought about becoming singing teachers but didn't know where to start. So it took me a little while, but eventually I realised that actually they were going to do this anyway, and I'd rather that they went out with some understanding of what to look for and how to, you know, to help a voice move forward. So I put together a five hour course, which we did in the lounge room of one of the students um, for five weeks. And before I even finished that course, I had quite a few people inquiring to find out if I would run any more because they were interested in doing the same. So it was a, sort of a happy accident, really, and I had never intended to go down that pathway of becoming a singing teacher trainer, but here we are, 12 years later, as you said. 12 years on then, what's your mission with BAST? And has anything changed from the initial mission? I don't think so. I, I think I've always wanted to empower singers to have options in terms of being able to earn income or extra income or supplement their income and also to feel confident and empowered you know in terms of teaching others in a safe way that's efficient and that has some sort of uh, research behind it and I still want to do that but I've just gone a little deeper with it I think it's really important that singing teachers come to the table as teachers with curiosity not only in terms of what they're seeing in front of them and hearing but also in their own skills and knowledge so i hope that i'm fostering curiosity creating more vocal nerds and um, ensuring that people feel like they have the confidence to go out and build on their knowledge we're never ever going to know everything i don't know everything but there's always more to learn and for me best is setting the foundations so that people have a springboard, you know, to move forward and to build on their education and their understanding and their skills. Can you talk about the 20 hour course? What does that entail? Yeah, so that five hour course eventually evolved into 20 hours. And this is really an introductory, you know, it's, it's very much the foundations of what you need to know in order to start teaching singing. We cover pretty much everything that you would need from anatomy and physiology, how to assess the voice, what to do when you've figured out what's wrong with it, uh, how to help a student, encourage them, motivate them, how to teach, how to build your business, understanding about the various vocal pathologies that might be uh, common in, in singing uh, singers, and also how to give good health advice, and then how to build your business and market yourself. But we touch in on these things because obviously with 20 hours, that's not very much time. Uh, so it's really an introductory course, though many people have gone on to do very well on the back of it. What do you think people are seeking when they're on the search for a course like Bast offers? So funny enough, I was talking to someone today about that. And I think ultimately they're looking for a course that can give them confidence to go out and start charging, to help them overcome imposter syndrome. That was what uh, the singer was talking about this morning. She said, I feel like an, I'd be an imposter if I was to go and teach now. But with the course, I would feel you know, like I had more knowledge and understanding of how to do this job. And of course, I think they're also seeking knowledge. You know, most of the people who come and do our course, it's not just that they want to be singing teachers, but they actually want to learn more about the voice. How does it work? You know, we can't see our instrument. So how does it work? And how do we make changes to it if we're trying to achieve a certain thing, whether it's stylistic or technical? 
And why do you think they choose BAST? A lot of people choose BAST because it's quite rounded. It sort of takes a very 360 approach in terms of teaching. We're not a methodology as such. We come from a very functional point of view. So in terms of what's, what are the vocal folds doing? What's the larynx doing? Do we need to correct it? And if we do, how far? Um, so we're not teaching a particular methodology. And also we cover quite a wide range of things. In fact, whenever we get feedback, I have never once had anyone say that anything was missing other than maybe more um, practical um, experience, uh, which, you know, I acknowledge is maybe not the strength of the, the best 20 hour course. It's like a bit of a brain dump. <laughs> and then you go away and you put that into practice, you know, with your either your guinea pig students or students that you already have. And then I think the other reason is because we've been around for so long and we've been very consistent. We have great trainers and we put out really good content. Um, so we're answering the needs of our uh, potential customers and uh, we're also delivering something which they find really useful and can go away and put into practice and start earning an income immediately. Also, we're just really nice people. Yes. <laughs> can you tell us about the alumni of the BAST courses? Who's come out of them and where have they gone on to? So we've been really fortunate to attract into the courses people from all over the world, literally all corners. There's obviously the UK, Europe, Australasia, the States, Canada, South America. And we so we have probably... I would say close to 600 graduates now. And they have gone into all sorts of different fields and areas. So there's obviously the, the singing teacher who's working from home and or in a studio somewhere renting a room and working day to day with hobby singers. There's some of our teachers have gone in to work with more professional end. Uh, I've got ex-grads who are touring the world or working with artists who are touring the world really celebrity names. We have um, singing teachers who are running their own schools and um, and also running their own um, choirs and workshops and things like that. We have graduates who've gone on to do masters in vocal pedagogy and also teachers like yourself who've gone in to work at performing arts colleges. So alumni have gone everywhere and anywhere that you could potentially go as a as a singing teacher and as well as the 20-hour course BAST offers an accredited level five qualification can you explain what that means the level five qualification is aimed at people who want to get some sort of higher level of education like a certificate a qualification and that's really what the level five is all about so if you do the extended diploma you come away with a um, creative industries practitioner, extended diploma, level five in teaching. So there are several final awards that you can get. There's the extended diploma, which is the all six units. And then you could do the diploma, which is just four units. There's a subsidiary diploma, which is three, and the extended certificate, which is two, and a certificate, which is one. There are specific units for each of those awards. If you wanted to do a unit that wasn't part of that, you would get a certificate of having attended that unit, um, but you wouldn't get a final award. So the actual units that we're doing, the first one is singing teacher skills. So that's all about the fundamental aspects of the things that you need to know, all the tools. So understanding the vocal anatomy and physiology, the science, uh, how to assess diagnostic criteria, how to um, progress a voice from one place to another, all these sort of technical um, specific processes, and also learning the vocabulary for delivering a, an efficient and safe singing lesson. And then the following unit for that is 507, which is singing teaching in practice. So that comes a little later in the course, which is where you take all of those tools and now you're applying it into a practical setting and we're helping you understand how to develop a lesson plan and how to progress 
um, a voice and a student from one place to another, um, how to help them within the industry as well. So another unit is singing teacher career development. So this is all about planning your development as a singing teacher and a singing within the creative industries. So you might decide initially, oh, I just want to teach from home. But as you go on, you might realize, no, I want to take it further and I want to work in an institution. So how would you develop your career in order to incorporate that? Or you might be a, an artist who likes to have a little bit of extra income when you're not working. And so how do you incorporate teaching into your creative um, pathway as well? Then we also look at group and collaborative teaching, which I think is really important. And this is something that we don't include in the 20 hour course. And this is obviously how to plan, design and develop and how to teach in a group setting. And we also uh, look at how do you collaborate with others? You know, how do you set up a collaborative kind of project where you're teaching with another person or with another team or with another business? Another unit that we do is called health and wellbeing. So this is all about the individual and their health and wellbeing as a singer and a singing teacher. And of course, that information you can then also transfer over to your students. And then we've got career business for portfolio, which is all about the um, aspect of um, marketing and business building and creating sort of this portfolio where you understand how your business will evolve. How do you market using social media? How do you um, get branding? And in terms of being a singing teacher, do you blend that in with you as the artist or not? Um, if that's an issue, um, how do you administer and run your business? Um, and then looking at things like fundraising and partnerships. And as I said, you can do all six of them, or you can do individual ones, or you can do um, a, collector, a collection of a few of them and um, still achieve an award. Do you need any prior experience or qualification to get onto this level? We would like people to have either the equivalent of up to level three or beyond of higher education and also around three to five years of professional experience as a performer. It's having said that it is treated as a case by case. And so we've worked, you know, we've got people coming onto the course who may not have gone the more traditional routes and may have qualifications that aren't in performing arts, but they've had a lot of performing arts kind of experience. Or maybe they haven't got any other qualifications, but they've been teaching for a very long time. So basically, it's not for someone who's just graduated from school or from college, but has no experience under their belt. Saying that, you know, it's still worthwhile to come and have a chat if you think you would, you're interested in doing this, but you're not sure if you have the qualifications or the experience, um, because it might be that actually, you know, we might advise, well, if you go and do the X, Y, and Z for a little while, then, you know, you will be suitable, or maybe the 20 hour course is more appropriate for you. How does the content differ from the level five compared to the 20 hour course? So obviously it's like any other qualification, there's, several units, there's actually six units that you need to do. And they're all categorized into slightly different um, areas. So with the BAS course, I have used that as the foundation to creating the level five, but we go in much deeper. So we've gone from 20 hours to 600 guided learning hours. So as you can imagine, that expands the um, education quite considerably and the mm -hmm. content. Um, so we go, even though we're covering anatomy and physiology, we go in a lot deeper, even though we're covering voice science, we're going a lot deeper. Mm. And we've also added into it a component, which is about career development. So thinking about how do you, as a singer, create this portfolio career, which includes teaching. And then also there is a whole unit on business, uh, development. So that's something we only do a couple of hours on in the course. So it goes in a lot deeper on everything. But I would say that 
the foundation or the skeleton of it is from the 20 hour course. So there might be a little bit of repetition, but there'll always be more depth. Mm. It sounds incredible. And how is it being conducted? Yeah, so we're delivering it online. It's a hybrid or blended learning um, style, synchronous and asynchronous. These are all words I've had to learn since. (laughs) And it basically means that some of the lectures are pre-prepared and others will be um, done live and you can join live. But of course, you know, if you're not in that time zone, you can still watch the recorded version of it. And we also have mentors that you would connect with every week to sort of make sure that you're staying on track or, you know, if there's any questions, um, they get answered. So a lot of it is pre-prepared and you can learn it in your own time, which is great. I mean, the classes are are released every Monday and then you spend the next seven days doing them in your own time. Always advise that people complete the work that's associated with that week before they start the next one, because otherwise you can get obviously quite far behind. But in terms of, you know, if you aren't available during the day, you can study on the in the evening, or if you can't do it during the week, you've got all weekend. So, you know, it, it can be suited to the, the learner's needs. Mm. So how long does it actually take to complete the whole thing? So each uh, unit is 10 weeks of classes and then a week of assessment. And then um, you could do, if you were doing the full extended diploma, you could do two units per term and that would take you three terms. Or you can spread them out and do one per term and so that would take you six terms. Mm -hmm. Also take a break in between if you need to. Say you need to take... um, a term off that wouldn't be a problem we just need to know the dates and everything that so we can submit it to the awarding body Mm. it sounds really flexible then in time how you can how you can spend that uh who are the trainers on the course so there's kaya hosted Kani, and myself and then we have a bunch of guest lecturers that are coming in as well um they're not confirmed so unfortunately i can't say any names at this point Mm. You spoke about assessment. Now, I'm a happy bunny when an essay is expected of me. I love doing them, which makes me a weirdo, I know. But how is that going to be processed and how is somebody assessed? Do we have to have a level of academia? Well, level five isn't highly academic. Um, I would say once we get to level six, yes, definitely. We will be introducing people into academia So I've already had an agreement from uh, somebody who works in academia and said that they're happy to come in and talk, you know, and give a lecture on how we can start to learn how to write academically. But a lot of what um, we thought we'd do for this level is to ensure that it's more portfolio or it's evidence-based in terms of, you know, an assessment might be you videoing yourself teaching. Um, Or it might be a portfolio that you've put together. So like a, you know, it might be a business plan and then other evidence, you know, research that you've done to build your business uh, or your career. Um, So it'll be a combination. It might also be a presentation. We we might also be expecting you, especially in the group and collaborative teaching unit, to actually teach a classroom that gets videoed or you know, it's done online. Usually it's quite a good way to do it nowadays. Um, you can do a Zoom classroom or if you can, you can create a, a workshop and put it together. It's part of the um, the business development is like how do you put together workshops and, mm-hmm. and market them and get people in and, you know, and actually run them. But then a part of it will also be we want to see the evidence that you've delivered it. Mm-hmm. So it might be screenshots of emails that you've sent, uh, it could be video or audio recordings, uh, it could be simulation, um, it might be interviews, you know, discussions, etc. It could be that, you know, it could be that you built your website and that's part of your portfolio. So we're looking at evidence of that. So it's really um, a, a variety of different activities that will be in- included. And we we'll try to mix it up so that it 
it's for everybody and there will be an ass assignment in there as well and there'll be some exam questions like multi-choice but we're trying to mix it up so that everybody gets catered for and it's not you know particularly leaning in one direction if somebody's already done the 20 hour course can they still do this accredited one oh of course yes and in fact um anybody we've got a couple of people already who have signed up who've done the course okay so one of the benefits is that you get the cost of whatever you paid for your course off the full amount. Um, yes, there might be some repetition, but to be honest, I've, I've had people saying to me that they've gone back to review the 20 hour course and realized there was so much stuff that they just hadn't taken on board at the time. Mm -hmm. And I don't think revision is going to be an issue really. And we're mm -hmm. kind of packaging it slightly differently. And, and so it'll just, you know, it, it'll be absorbed into your learning and anything that you don't have problems with, you can just skip over, you know. So yes, there will be repetition, but it'll still, there will be still lots of new stuff that will move you forward, even if you've done the course. And how much does this level five cost? So the full amount, if you want to do the extended diploma is 3,300. That's the full price and 550 per unit if you wanted to do individual units there are other awards so you can do all six you can do um i think it's uh, one three and four but they are pre-selected units if you want to get some kind of recognized certificate you could do any of the units as a single unit and you would get a certificate to say that you'd completed it, but it wouldn't be an award. Um, so the full course, uh, if you pay up front, uh, you get 5% off. So that's saving 165. So if you've done the course and you pay up front, you know, it's quite a big saving. Mm. Um, and also we're always offering discounts. If you're on the mailing list, I highly recommend people get on the mailing list because we'll occasionally send out a an incentive to get people onto the course um, with some sort of discount. And of course, it's important to know as well that you don't have to pay up front. We can spread those costs out for you um, in instalments. Considering the field that we're in, is it essential for a singing teacher to have an official qualification? Well, essentially, anybody can go out and become a singing teacher. That's the reality. Your local dog walker might decide tomorrow, oh, I fancy being a singing teacher, and off they go and set up the business. And, you know, at the end of the day, if the students are happy, you know, they'll continue going. There's no regulatory body. And to be honest, really until now, there haven't been any particular singing teacher qualifications. Having said that, there are a lot more singing teachers out there who want to a gain more knowledge and also have that credibility not only for their own business and you know uh, reassurance and confidence as teachers um, and you know because a lot of people like to be accountable you know for what they do but also because i've noticed that increasingly in institutions for instance People with those kind of qualifications may have an edge to someone who doesn't, unless that institution is specifically looking for industry experience, which does happen, especially in the contemporary world. So you might go in and become a lecturer at a, one of these institutions based on your um, performance experience, and, but not on qualifications. So ultimately, you don't have to have qualification. But I think increasingly it will become more of a demand mm. and institutions will want to make sure that they're providing teachers who have got specific training in this area in vocal pedagogy. Is there any reason why we wouldn't do a qualification then? Well, if you don't need to, if you're already teaching and you're getting plenty of students and you're happy with what you're doing and your students are progressing and no one's complaining or leaving you because you aren't helping them progress, then there's no need, really. Um, as, in terms of qualification, I mean, not it's not going to suit everybody. It really isn't. You know, there's some people who don't want to learn formally and don't want to do assessments and things like that. And the reality is, as I said before, you can still 
earn a decent income and get quite far as a singing teacher without any qualifications. So I think it's a very personal preference. So where can listeners find out if this is suited to them and get in touch with BAST? So the first port of call is downloading the brochure, which you'll find on the website and we'll link as well below. And then have a call with us. So call and have a chat. It's free. You know, we can definitely help you understand whether this is going to be the right thing for you and answer any questions that you might have. So that's the preliminary call. And then if you're interested, you can make an application and then you'll have an interview with myself or Kaya to make sure that you are suitable for the course and um, to find out when would be a good time for you to start. Amazing. Incredible. Well, congratulations, Lynn, on the development of BAS throughout these 12 years. And I wish you all the best for this level five. Thank you very much. Do, 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 do.